Hi guys, I'm John from Monaco 3D's Print Lab. A lot of you would already be familiar with the free Chai2 Box slicing software for resin printers. Today on Pro Tips, I'm going to run you through the newly released Pro version of Chai2 Box. We've been fortunate enough to be one of the beta testers for the last couple of months and it's now available for download from their website. It is a paid yearly subscription, however you may find the list of new features worth the money. One thing I should mention is that the new slice file format will require a firmware update for your Chai2 Box controller based printer. There's a bit to get through, so let's get into it now. We have a new layout now. We have the tabbed menu bar at the top and that gives you access to a bunch of new features. We also have the model list and the resin list on the right hand side and the list of printers at the bottom. The usual transformation uh, buttons are still on the left, so nothing's changed there apart from the extra select button. And here's the old layout in Chai2 Box Free. The select option has been added to the list on the left here. We still have the usual move option. Uh, it hasn't changed. The rotate option, it's pretty much the same. And the scale option looks the same. We also still have the mirror option at the bottom there, and that hasn't changed. All right, down the bottom here, we have our list of printers that we've got to find. And on the right, we have the list of current uh, resin profiles and the list of models in the top right hand corner. In the Start tab, we can see we've got a bunch of options there, just quickly running through them. You can pause the video if you just want to see what the descriptions are for each of them. Very helpful feature to be able to export your models as an STL or object. In the Prepare tab, we have the ability to copy models, split them up into individual sections, auto-orientate and auto-layout. Also a new feature called Add Tag, which lets you emboss text on the model. Boolean operations, cutting the model, hollowing and digging a hole. So we've got a few new options in there. Can't look at the repair or support option until we've got the models on the build plate. We have an analyze measure option, which basically gives you rulers to measure distances between objects and build plates. And then the last tab we have is settings help. And that lets you go into the settings. And here are the options we have. You can also pause the video here if you need to look at those settings uh, for yourself. But of course, you can download the software and have a trial to test it out yourself. Uh, we also have the licensing option, the ability to check for any updates on the software. And we also, if we click on manual, uh, it will bring up the software manual online through your web browser. And you can see there's quite a bit of information in the help file that you can look through and that will allow you to have some time to go through and just uh, get a good feel of what the new options are. Factory settings, uh, you can change your keyboard shortcuts. We have the plugin. At the moment, the only plugin in there is to export to the Anycubic format. Uh, the ability to look at the log file, contact technical support and look at the about to see what version you're running. Plus it gives you useful information on the current system. So back at the Start tab. All right, let's start uh, adding uh, machines. We'll call them printers. And you can see there's a fairly extensive list of printers available to us. Scroll through the list there. A bunch of brands that you can select. We'll go into the Elegoo and select the Mars because I haven't added, uh, sorry, not the Mars, the Saturn. I haven't added that one yet and you can select uh, the default thickness of your layers for the default profile. Here's a new feature. If you have a look at the um, bottom here, we've got a model of the actual bill plate itself. And they've applied this to most of the models uh, that we have out there, most of the machines. Frozen Sonic 4K missing. Uh, we have the uh, LD006. Frozen Sonic Mighty 4K, missing a build plate there. Probably still waiting on a model. Uh, we've got the Anycubic Mono, Mono X, look at that. Beautiful. Got the LD002H and the R, very similar build plates. 
slightly different size. So that's a nice little feature and you can turn the um, display of the model off and on. Alright, let's get into importing the models. Up in the right hand side you can select the plus option and bring in a model. And we open up our list of models and we've got a bunch of Lego um, figurine parts here. And have a look at the list of input formats that you can bring in. This is phenomenal. This is really good. There are some formats in there which are parametric, not um, mesh, and it will convert them into a mesh for you. And that's extremely handy. I've had a number of customers send me formats which are not uh, in a mesh format, and now I've got the ability to bring them in and convert them into a mesh. Fantastic option because you can then export that model as an STL. So that on its own is almost worth the money. So there's a, a .step file that I've brought in. It's made up of individual bits and pieces and you can split that model up into its constituents just by clicking on split model. So we'll click on that now. And then when you click on I think that was yes. <laughs> it's missing the yes and no options. Uh, you can see how it's broken up the model into its individual parts. And then you can select an individual part and move it around. And even export those individual parts as separate STLs. So that's quite a powerful feature. That's in version 1.0 of Chai 2 Box Pro. All right, let's start from scratch and bring in a part that we'd like to print. In this case, it will be the hand of our Lego man. And there it is, brought in on our build plate. And we'll select the rotate option and flatten by face, and that will place the base of it directly on the build plate. So we have the auto orientation option. When we click on that, it will tilt it to the angle it feels is the most optimal for printing. If I keep clicking it, it will flip it over and start toggling between two different positions. Not entirely sure why it does that. Uh, however, I'm just gonna set it back to the way it was and then do that first orientation that it's selected. Under auto layout, we can now take multiple objects and make them fit within an area on the build plate. We can define that as either a platform placement or an area placement. And that will just place the model in the middle there. Here's a new feature, the ability to place embossed text on the surface of the model. And that can either be an inset or a raised text that's on the surface. And you can change the font, you can set the size of it. The one thing I can't do is rotate it. So it's always flat on the build plate. And you can set the font size, and that's a quite a handy little feature. We also have the Boolean operation. That's quite handy for um, having one object cut away from another object. That's a similar feature to what you've got within a product like Blender. So you can select a unison, uh, intersection, or um, basically uh, subtraction. So you can see how that's subtracted from the other model. The cut option lets you cut the model across a plane or a set line that you draw. So in this case you can see it's cutting across a Z plane and then you can actually draw a line by clicking on partition face and it will use that as its cut line. So it'll go across the base there and go apply and you can see the cut's been applied. So they're now two separate objects. All right, we have the hollow option. It allows you to reduce the amount of resin that's used on the model. The only downside is that you quite often will end up with wet resin still trapped inside the model unless you put decent drain holes in the model. There is a separate video that we're gonna cover doing hollowing of a model. So you can see how I've selected the option to do a grid infill and that will actually make it harder for me to get the, uh, the trap resin out of that uh, model. 
and we have the ability to cut a hole in the surface of the model and the number of edges for that shape can be defined. So if I've got three edge numbers, that'll be a triangle that I'm cutting out of the bottom of it. In this case, I've got 45 edges, which is giving me a round shape. And there we go, I've cut a hole in the bottom, but we don't want that hole to be that big. So we'll drop it down in size so that uh, we've got just enough room for the drainage to happen there. We have a new tab here called Repair. This is extremely useful for models that have come in with flipped normals, holes in the mesh, bits of mesh that are inside the model that shouldn't be there, all sorts of issues. And there's two very simple options, Basic Repair and Advanced Repair, to save you the hassle of trying to work out what could be wrong with the model. And it does a very decent job of repairing the model. Now in this case, when I cut the hole in the bottom of the model, it actually left a hole in the inner mesh that was created there, and it's gone and corrected that for me. So we have a look at the bottom there. It's sealed up the hole that was created in the inner mesh. Not sure what the coat outer surface does. I am yet to see what it actually does as the end result. All right, so we're back to start tab and we can see the original model and the new fixed model and the original model has a hole inside the mesh and the new one doesn't. Let's start doing supports for this model. Under the support tab, you can now see that we have a new box that's open and that gives us the ability to define the shape of the supports. And now we have the ability to have a tapered support. So the bottom can be wider than the top. You can also select the type of support that you want to add. So in this case I've selected the tree option and I'm going to add a few contact points at the top of the model here. And you'll see what the end effect of that is in just a second. There you go, it creates a tree with one single stem that's tapered from the base all the way up. You can also see that the raft is in this case a very new raft that wasn't present in the old version or the free version so we'll add some more supports at the base here just manually adding supports and we'll do we've done as a very similar thing here with the tree supports which isn't particularly practical for the base of that model so we'll just change to vertical supports and add those on instead Let's add a few at the back there and around the side. Now we have a look at that and you can see we've got vertical supports. Now we're adding a, a different type of support that attaches from the model down to an existing vertical so that we don't need to have additional verticals. So you've got a fair amount of control now over the type of support you're going to be adding. So we'll just keep on adding supports of different types and eventually we end up with manually added supports. Now that's all well and good, but we also have the ability to add supports um, via the automatic support generation and that's actually quite effective. So if we do that now, we'll have a look at what it thinks is the appropriate um, supports for this model. So you can see that uh, with it set to an angle of 50 degrees, uh, it really doesn't do many supports up the stem of the um, the wrist on this model. So we're going to incre increase that angle to 70 degrees and recreate the uh, auto supports. And now we've got a lot more supports on that model. And that may be too many supports for your liking. And you can certainly adjust via the touch distance and the middle distance. Let's recreate that. Here we go, and we can change the grid uh, hexer size, there we go. 
All right, so the touch distance, if we tweak those settings, you'll see what the difference is here. By making the middle distance uh, a lot larger, the distance between the verticals, which are long, will be much further apart. Also under the advanced option, you can see we've got a whole stack of options, uh, additional options there. Right, now that we've got our model nicely supported, we'll select the printer that we're going to be printing on for, via the tabs at the bottom. And then you'll select the profile and you can add new profiles like you could on the old version. And we will then, once we've selected the um, particular resin we want, just make sure we've got our settings correct for that. The settings in here are very similar to version 1.8.1 .1 of the free version. And we'll just change the bottom tolerance to get rid of the elephant's foot. Don't need to change anything there. And we can see the current settings for our selected printer. So now if I click on single parameter slice, it will do a quick slice and we can scroll down and have a look at what the sliced export will look like, each of the different layers. And there's our base. Now if I switch to the Frozen Sonic, you'll see that I now have this multi-parameter slice option. And this lets me add individual height layers which use a different profile. So if you say for instance had a ball which had to have a much thinner layer height to get the detail on the top and bottom of the ball shape. So there's our slice model. Alright, and we can actually modify the parameters of our slice model, in this case just the light off delay, uh, and we can detect if there's any islands that are not supported. And here you can see that it's picked up a few spots on some of the layers where it hasn't uh, supported that portion of the model, and we can manually just remove, using the edit pixel option, those particular pixels which are not supported. So we just go through and remove those pixels from each of those layers and you will end up with a much cleaner um, print with no strange bits of debris floating in the resin or stuck to the FEP sheet. So what are my conclusions on this version of the software? Well, it's certainly got a really nice collection of features the more important feature that I think is the ability to bring in a wider variety of file formats. That's super important. And the ability to export them to an STL mesh. You also have a much more powerful collection of tools for repairing those meshes. Because quite often you will receive models which have got holes in them or bits of mesh which are, just shouldn't be there. And it does a pretty good job of cleaning that up. It's not perfect. Probably not as thorough as bringing the model into Blender and fixing it there, or other mesh editing programs. There's also online mesh repair tools, but the one that's built into the software is pretty good. Apart from that, the layout's quite good. I haven't had any issues trying to find settings that I was after, and it generally produces really nice supports which have been very reliable so far. The tapered supports which are thicker at the base and thin out towards the top, fantastic. They actually stick really well to the model and they haven't broken off so far uh, during a print. Um, so yeah, it's a great upgrade to the light version.